Alice. And I'm Greg. Today we're walking over to the Trotsky Casa Museo here in Coyoacán. The museum is a short walk from our apartment, just a few blocks from the Frida Kahlo Museum in the Del Carmen neighborhood. Although Trotsky's home is often described as being on Vienna Street, the entrance to the museum is on Rio Churubusco. It's brick red and hard to miss. Here's Diego and Frida with the Trotsky entourage, and they are in Chapultepec. What year is this? This is 1938. Some of you may wonder how Leon Trotsky, the former commander of the Red Army, ended up in Mexico in the first place. The journey can be traced to a very contentious relationship that developed between two of the party's most dynamic leaders. In 1903, the Russian Social Democratic Labor Party split into two factions, the Bolsheviks and the Mensheviks, due to ideological differences. Joseph Stalin aligned with the Bolsheviks, who believed in centralized leadership, while Trotsky initially identified more closely with the Mensheviks, who espoused a more inclusive and democratic organizational model. There were many other differences between these two groups, but we won't go into that. The important thing is that Trotsky and Stalin had very different ideologies. In 1904, Trotsky would leave the Mensheviks and reconcile with the Bolsheviks. When civil war broke out in Russia, Trotsky would become the leader of the Red Army. After the death of Vladimir Lenin, there was a struggle for control of party leadership. Stalin quickly consolidated political power to succeed Lenin as Secretary General. Trotsky, who was a military man and a fine orator, had been considered a likely candidate to succeed Lenin, but he lacked the political support to challenge Stalin. Ideological differences caused tension. While Stalin was content with a one-nation revolution, Trotsky still favored ongoing world revolution. The two men criticized each other openly, a situation that became untenable for Stalin and which eventually led to Trotsky's expulsion from Russia in 1929. Trotsky famously called Stalin the grave digger of the revolution. This is Trotsky and his wife Natalia Sedova, who went into exile with him. Trotsky and his wife Natalia moved to many different countries while in exile, before ending up in Mexico City. By this time, Trotsky and his supporters had been tried in absentia and found guilty of betraying the revolution. You might wonder why Diego Rivera is in so many of these photos with Trotsky. He was actually the host of Trotsky when he was in exile here in Mexico City. He petitioned Lázaro Cárdenas, who was then the president, to grant asylum to Leon Trotsky, who was fleeing from the Stalin regime. It would be very dull to tell you about Leon Trotsky's time here in Mexico City without telling you a little bit about the relationship he had with Frida Kahlo. This is a well-known love affair between Trotsky, who was married to Natalia at the time, and Frida Kahlo, who was with Diego. Initially, the couple moved into Frida Kahlo's Blue House in Coyoacan. The arrangement worked for a while, at least until Leon and Frida started having an affair. It is unclear whether Diego, who was married to Frida at the time, ever found out about the affair, but Natalia definitely knew what was going on and was terribly unhappy about it. There was fear among the household staff at the Blue House that Diego, who owned several firearms, would shoot Trotsky in a fit of jealousy if he ever found out about the affair. Luckily, Natalia applied pressure on Leon to move, and by 1939, Leon and Natalia had found a new home just a few blocks from Frida's Blue House, which is where we are today. So this is the floor plan. We're going to follow the little arrows and show you around.
So we're in the office now, and these are the actual books and desks and equipment that they used here. I want to point out something very peculiar about this room, and that is that the windows are bricked up halfway. That's the street facing Morelos, and the ones that face, that door that faces out towards Vienna is completely bricked up. If you look through the top part of the window, you can see the bricks and you can see a ladder leading up to a lookout post. There's the lookout post. It was added after an attempt was made on Trotsky's life. This is a solid steel door. And look at this, look at the thickness of these walls. They're double reinforced brick and then cement on the inside with steel casing. Um, obviously they didn't want anyone coming into this room. Well, this is the bedroom of Natalia and Leon Trotsky. As you can see it's a high ceiling, but again, very thick walls, steel cased windows with uh, doors that close on those windows to lock out anybody that might be trying to get in. But otherwise, a very simple lifestyle. The walls of this house tell a story. There was a failed assassination attempt in May of 1940, and the house still bears the scars of the bullets that just missed the couple as they lay sleeping in their bedroom. Their terrified young grandson was in the next room. Trotsky fortified his defenses, tightened up security, but in the end, there was no storming of the guard tower. Nothing quite that dramatic. Instead, a gentle-looking man, the boyfriend of Trotsky's secretary, Sylvia Agalov, infiltrated the household, gained the family's trust, and when the opportunity arose, he took an ice axe to Leon's skull. The assassin was a man posing as Canadian who went by the name Frank Jackson. In reality, his name was Ramon Mercader, a Spaniard turned Soviet agent. Mercader was arrested and jailed in Mexico. He served 19 years and eight months. In 1960, when he was released from prison, Mercader was awarded with the title of Hero of the Soviet Union, Order of Lenin and the Gold Star Medal. Visiting Trotsky's Casa Museo can really help bring this story to life. It will raise many other questions too, like why and how the artist David Alfaro Siqueiros was involved in a Trotsky assassination attempt. There are many interwoven stories, but they exceed the scope of our video here today. We hope that you've enjoyed our video, and if you're interested in history and politics, we recommend that the next time you're in Coyoacan, you stop by for a visit to this museum. Aside from being the final resting place of Leon Trotsky's remains, the house is a time capsule from an era where art, politics, and global espionage collided. If you've enjoyed the content of today's video, please give us a like and subscribe.